Ah, here we go again. Apple's latest flagship smartphone, the iPhone 13 Pro. Like the iPhone 13 mini, I've also been using this as my primary phone over the last week and a half, and I think it's time to tell you guys my experience with Apple's new Pro iPhone. Now this isn't going to be your typical thorough review like some tech reviewers on the internet. I rarely do benchmark scores or get super technical with the latest processors. I'm here to share my experience with you guys and this year specifically, talk more about the cameras because it's probably the biggest upgrade on iPhone this year. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe now and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on really beautiful videos like this in the future. So what is new with the iPhone 13 Pro? Well, in terms of its overall design, if you didn't pick up the new Sierra blue color, you probably won't notice anything different. But if you've used the 12 Pro from last year, you'll definitely notice how massive the camera module is on the 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max versus last year's 12 Pro. Now besides that, the outside looks relatively the same. You have a stainless steel finish on the frame and a matte finish on the back, which looks great in my opinion. But just like my 13 mini, I like to slap a dbrand skin on my iPhone to make it look more unique. I'm using a full wrap on my 13 Pro this year and it looks really, really good. Now this makes the iPhone look stealthier and it's a lot grippier since the swarm skin has this really nice texture to it. And it also covers the stainless steel frame, which completes the entire look. So if you wanna go ahead and pick up your own set of skins from dbrand, check out the first link down below or go to dbrand com slash hey markel Now, another thing that Apple added to the Pro line this year besides that huge camera bump is a ProMotion display, which is a variable refresh rate that goes up to 120 hertz. Now, as of right now, first-party apps are the only ones that can fully take advantage of this, but in a couple of months, we'll probably start seeing third-party apps adapt to ProMotion. Now, it could just be me, but after a week or so of using the iPhone 13 Pro, I actually sometimes forget that this has ProMotion. I have an iPad mini as well as an iPhone 13 mini, so I know what iOS looks like without ProMotion, and I guess I I just didn't notice it enough for it to wow me. Now don't get me wrong, it's still a great feature to have on iPhones for sure, but I don't think it had that same impact when the iPad Pro got ProMotion display for the first time. So that actually made sense for the iPad Pro because of the Apple Pencil since it needs that high refresh rate for less input lag, but on iPhones, I don't know. Now while we are on the topic of displays, the notch has gotten smaller, 20% to be exact, but it is a tiny bit taller instead. Now the Pro display is also now 25% brighter than last year, which is great, so you can actually see your iPhone screen outside on a bright and sunny day. So before we jump into the camera section, let's quickly talk about battery life. Last year's 12 Pro for whatever reason would only last from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., which to be honest, isn't terrible, but I feel like it could have been better. This year, Apple claims that I'll get an extra hour and a half of battery with the 13 Pro, which seems to be pretty accurate. Some days I'll get more out of the phone, sometimes a little bit on par with last year's 12 Pro, but it's really hard to benchmark battery life until a couple months of usage, so we'll revisit this in a couple of months and see how it holds up. But for now, it is a pretty good bump in battery life, and I think you guys are gonna notice it too. All right, cameras. There's a lot to talk about here, so let's start off with its camera specs. The 13 Pro and Pro Max have the same exact sensors this year, which is great because you don't have to opt in for the more expensive and much bigger Pro Max or better cameras. It's still a triple camera setup with a wide, ultra wide, and now a 3X telephoto lens, which I absolutely love using. The main wide camera can now capture photos up to two times more light since it has a bigger sensor. And with that, you'll also get even better and more natural look in bokeh thanks to that new f1.5 aperture. The the ultra wide, on the other hand, can now capture 92% more light versus last year, and it also now features autofocus, which helps with macro photography as well. Now, the new 3X telephoto lens now has a bigger sensor and can now shoot night portrait mode, which is great. All three cameras are still 12 megapixels, though, so I'm hoping next year we get a bump in resolution to get even crispier, sharper images. Shots on the 13 Pro looks great out of the camera. I think with smart HDR4 and that new image signal processor on iPhone 13, photos just look more natural, it looks sharper and looks less blotchy if that makes sense. Macro photography is also a pro only feature and this may actually be the only phone that can capture really great macro photos. It's actually usable since it's a 12 megapixel sensor and it looks really good out of the camera. Now, just like the non-pro models, the pro line also features cinematic mode for video and photographic styles, which 
are kind of like LUTs to give your photos that extra pop, but doesn't mess with skin tones and gives you a more balanced yet creative look. Now, after a week and a half of using the iPhone 13 Pro, I've learned to love taking photos with photographic styles turned on. There's a few different styles available, but my favorite would probably be Rich Warm. These are my settings for it, and I think it's the best for skin tones, which doesn't look too saturated or too contrasty, but it also gives your photos a nice neutral warm look, perfect for sharing quickly on social or with your friends via AirDrop. Now, if you have your own settings, let me know in the comments down below, because I'd love to test it out as well and compare it with mine. Now, personally, I would love more options versus just these two sliders that changes the contrast and the warmth of the photo. I'd love to see a tint slider and maybe a hue slider as well to give me finer controls before shooting. But for its first iteration, this is a good start from Apple, and I can't wait to see how they update and make this feature better in the future. Okay, so let's move on to my favorite new feature on iPhone 13 and 13 Pro, cinematic video. <laughs> To dumb it down, it's basically portrait mode, but for video. Basically what Apple's doing here is that it's analyzing the video in real time and it's using the neural engine and the processing power of the A15 processor inside the iPhone 13 to give your videos that nice cinematic look with that blurred background and rack focusing. But what's even crazier is that you can edit the depth effect and change the focus point even after you shoot the video, which is something my $4,000 camera can't even do. So let's take a look at some of that cinematic footage that I shot over the last week and a half, and you guys let me know your thoughts below. So that's cinematic mode. Pretty impressive for a smartphone, right? I wasn't a believer of this feature when Apple announced it on stage, but like I said many times, it's not just about the camera you shoot with, it's also about the lighting and the composition that can elevate your videos. Cinematic mode is not perfect. I think there's definitely room for improvement here. If you take a look at this footage right here, you can see that the iPhone she's holding, half of it is blurred out and sort of blends in with the background. But also look at the hat that she's wearing. It's doing the same thing here. This one was shot with a 3X telephoto lens, but I think with cinematic mode, it's best to just use a regular wide camera so you can get the best results. However, if you're like me and you love that compressed look, shoot with a 3X telephoto lens and just make sure that your composition is right and maybe stop down the aperture in post to make it look more natural. Now, my only real complaint here with cinematic mode is that it's capped at 1080p at 30 frames per second, which is fine, but I would love to have an option to shoot in 4K 30 or 4K 60 with cinematic mode. But I know that's asking for too much and we'll probably need a way faster processor and better graphics to process all of that in real time, but hopefully we'll get 4K cinematic mode next year with manual controls. And that's the iPhone 13 Pro. Cinematic mode, photographic style, pro motion display, 25% brighter screen, slightly smaller notch, and better battery life. Sure, if you have an iPhone 12, it might not be the best move to upgrade to this year's iPhone and would highly suggest you wait for the 14. But if you're a content creator, the camera features alone will for sure step up your game. And in my opinion, you won't need to buy a bulky, expensive mirrorless camera to create really beautiful looking videos. Anyways, let me know what you guys think of the iPhone 13 Pro in the comments down below. Are you picking one up? Are you waiting for next year instead? I'd love to hear your thoughts and yeah, I'll see you all in the next one.